What's one thing that you've never said in an interview that you want to tell me right now? That uh, David Blaine swallowed my ring. Never said that in an interview before. No one knows that? No. I'm wearing said ring right now. After I've washed my hands a couple times, peroxide, just, you know, just as much as possible, but that's you it. It's been a busy year for Justin Thomas. He's newly married, just opened a golf course he designed with Jack Nicholas. recently moved into a brand new house and spends hours a day chasing his son Frank around the house. There's no chance that he has time for us to do a sit down interview, but we showed up anyway. Hey man. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. That's really good. Hey, I'm being man. dead serious. Love it. You're 42? Yep. Oh, well, you're older than that. <laughs> <laughs> Frank does not like the drone. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here with you, man. Me this, too, dude. This makes me so happy. I've only interviewed this guy one other time. Uh, we were in L.A. Mm -hmm. It was for Access Hollywood. But, you know, it was like tournament mode. Yeah. So for you to open up your beautiful brand new home to have me here means the absolute world to me. And uh, I'm just pumped, so I wanted to say thank you. Of course, dude. Happy to have you here. All right, we're going to head out. Okay. <laughs> um, when you walk around... the grass and look at your house. Do you feel like a kid from Kentucky? Because this is another level. Uh, no, the, the intercoastal doesn't remind me a lot of the Ohio River, uh, <laughs> a little different color, uh, a little, little different vibes, but no, it's, um, yeah, it is kind of wild. I mean, I'll always be a Louisville, Kentucky kid at heart, but uh, you know, what's it, 65 degrees out here right now and I'm in a, in a hoodie sweatshirt, whereas You know, Kentucky kid growing up, I'd be in shorts and a t-shirt out playing golf right now. It's just insane, though. When you look around, you gave me a tour last night when I got in, <clears> and <throat> I'm just, I'm blown away by it. Does it feel like home yet? Because I know you moved in not too long ago. Yeah, it does. I mean, it, it's, it, it's very homey. My wife does an unbelievable job with the decor. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's not often you get kicked out of your own bedroom like you did to, to Jill and I last night. You know, we had to, <laughs> Jill demanded that he stayed in the master, and we stayed uh, in a guest room, but... You know what you do for your host, right? Well, yeah, to be honest, I appreciate it, but I just, I, it made me feel uncomfortable. You guys were on a queen and I was in a king, but, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. you guys California are, king. Yep. You're, you're cow, sorry, I didn't want to get the details of that screwed up. <laughs> do you want to take a seat here and we'll chat a little bit? I'd love to. This is the comfiest interview I've done. This is my goal. I've always wanted to do interviews like this where you guys feel comfortable and I feel comfortable and we're doing it, which is great. Mm -hmm. I want to get back to Jill and the decor. Did you guys agree on the decorations and the furniture and stuff or different visions? Uh, yeah, my vision was her vision, so we, we agreed. You're lying. I'm not lying. I'm just not... Yeah, maybe I made it up a little bit. I <laughs> no, I, I trust her opinion. I'll just say that. Because this is a big jump. I've been to your last house to this. I mean, your last house was kind of like a bachelor pad. And this is like, I'm a married man. This is going to be like my family home, right? Yeah, yeah. I heard that a couple times from Jill that, you know, you're not in college anymore. Uh, you know, we don't need all of this. We could actually make this a little bit more of a home. And yeah, so that, that's what we have now. I'm growing up. What was the thing that she made you get rid of that still stings? I don't need to put her on blast. That's true. But probably my Alabama pool table. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She didn't make me, I, but she would have preferred it not. What maybe. happened to it? The people who bought our house, they for some reason wanted it. So I said, sure, sounds good. Did Coach Saban buy your house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ricky doesn't live as close to you. Yep. He was like right around the corner. Yep. Now it's a little further away. Have you processed not having your best friend nearby? It's tough because it, it, we used to see him basically daily. Mm -hmm. You know, taking Frank for a walk, we would uh, we would just go down the driveway and whether him or Allison liked it or not, I'd pretty much just walk in the side door. <laughs> But he's got a lot of stuff going on there. So it's probably, they probably like it a lot more than I do. Yeah, you can't drop by and, you know, give them eggs or almond milk. You can't borrow those things now if you want to make a smoothie. You're going to have to find new neighbors around here to, to help you with your smoothies. Yeah, I'm going to have to get the, um, 
you know, everybody's grocery list and, yeah. and see what I can do. I know you guys are very busy. I kind of feel bad, so I wanted to make you a morning smoothie. You call it even? Yeah. All right, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Do you do smoothies every morning, or are you more of a protein shake guy? Um, I'm a little bit of both. I, I usually I'll have a smoothie uh, whenever I'm with you because you make them for me. Mm -hmm. My wife makes them, but uh, so it sounds like now that I'm saying it out loud, it's just whenever somebody <laughs> else makes it for me is when I do a smoothie. Here's where we get crazy. Okay. Cold brew. Okay. Coffee guy? No. Okay, great. R you don't drink coffee at all? No. Zero. Okay. I'm not allergic. I just don't drink it. Okay. Are you being serious? I'm being this serious. <laughs> I had all these ingredients shipped here. <laughs> um, okay, so you're not even going to try this. If no, I, I am. I, I will. I'll try it. Yeah. Okay. What, what's the, the no coffee thing? Will it make you anxious or? I don't, I just don't really like the taste of it. And uh, same. And it makes me, yeah, a little jittery. So as you could tell, we put just a little just coffee in there. Um, <laughs> is this peanut butter here? Yep, we're gonna do a big heaping scoop of peanut butter for Justin's. You told me Frank was gonna walk over here and that's exactly what he did. Quick question about Frank. Does he realize how famous he is or he just thinks he's just a normal dog? Uh, I don't know, he can't talk because he's a dog, so I'm not able to figure these things out, but I, I gotta think there's somewhere down in there he knows. Yeah, he hasn't changed, right? Spoiled rotten. Yeah. He was all over the internet last week. Jeez. We don't want it to be too liquidy. Yeah. But we want it, we want the consistency in there. This is honestly, I'm not even being stupid, this is a beautiful consistency. So just... That's for me. Just because I know you, you don't do coffee, so I'm gonna do like a little. Is that? No, I'm kidding. I can do a little more. I'll give you a little more. I don't have a name for it yet, but okay. I think we should call it the Justin. Cheers. Seems, seems a little cheesy, but I'm, yeah. I'm for it. Thanks, man. To be honest. That's really good. Are you messing I'm with being me? dead serious. You love it? I do. It's like a dessert. Right. Come here. Come here, it's okay. Come look, here. Look at Come it. Come here, Angel. You okay? Come here. Tell your dad to stop being so mean to you. I'm, I'm just trying to toughen him up. All right, come here, Frank. It's crazy how life changes so fast. It, mm -hmm. You know, just looking back, I think we've been friends seven or eight years now. You are a year and in change into marriage. How are we liking it so far? It's been great. It's been great. Uh, you did an unbelievable job, by the way, uh, officiating the wedding. Stop it. Yeah. Go on. You were talking last night. What's the most nervous you've been? I've never married anybody in my life before. And I said it was the most nervous I've ever been since I had to do the live red carpet of the Emmys. You asked me to marry you. And like, no one's ever asked me to do that. And I didn't want to let you guys down, but I, it's new territory for yeah. me, so I was petrified. Yeah. Nerves were just insane. I don't remember anything. It was just, you know, you've been up there. You just, you completely black out of what happens if you're up there 10 minutes or an hour. It's just, you're in such a la-la land and days that you just don't even remember it. What was the most profound thing that I said that day during the ceremony? <sighs> um... Yeah, probably all of it was tied for first, I'd say. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta go back and watch the wedding. Hey, I honestly don't remember anything I either. Do. I was like <laughs> looking, I was like, these are some of my heroes in the audience. I can't screw this up. This is the <laughs> biggest day of your life. Look at that. It's okay. Is that a bird? That's a camera, buddy. It kills heart. Oh my God. Duty. All right, so the game is what? So sometimes Jordan and I, when we're throwing ball, I mean, this is, you know, crazy on the PGA Tour, obviously. <laughs> okay. See how far you can throw a ball opposite handed, but also you don't step with the correct foot. Opposite hand, opposite foot. Okay. So, I mean, it's, but it's not a reaction thing, you know, it's like, a, okay. Yeah. You know, and I'm, if it looked half as cool as it felt like it looked, <laughs> it's got to be good, right? So. I mean, you're an athlete. Opposite. Yep. Oh, wow. Was that, it looked like a shot put. Why is it when you throw opposite handed like you can't go back? It's just like a... Why is it so vulnerable? I don't know, but I'm going to give it another try. Yeah, give it another try. I don't leave anything back, though. Yep. It's just quick, just... <laughs> the 
there. That was kind of nice. There's something about what you're doing with your hand that makes me uncomfortable. It makes me more uncomfortable. I'll probably be sore tomorrow. <laughs> Two throws? Yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> this kind of catches your eye when you walk in the house. I see great trophies and accomplishments. What do you see? Yeah, I see the same. I, I may think of them a little differently. Not that I need motivation, but it's just good. Almost reminder sometimes. Justin Thomas is your latest players champion. He's the FedEx Cup champion. It's going to be one of those years that is going to stand the test of time. I think you can sometimes forget about stuff you've maybe done in the past or or maybe at least me personally don't give myself enough credit for some things I've achieved or accomplished. So I think seeing this every once in a while is a good thing for me. So if you see this right here, the FedEx Cup 2017, Justin Thomas, mm -hmm. um, does your mind immediately go to a specific moment? Yeah, I think of, uh, I mean, as weird as it is, I think of like the putt I had on 18 that I almost made, but there was still some things that were to be decided. I knew if I made birdie, I for sure won the FedEx Cup, but Luckily, par was good enough, but for some reason, that's that's just what I think of. <laughs> the first thing that came to mind. And then, do you have a big dinner after you win the FedEx Cup, and, and you're like, "Oh, I'm just I'm gonna spend like crazy. I'm getting steaks and sirloins and whatever anybody wants." Yeah, <laughs> we uh, actually went straight to straight to Jersey where I ran into you. That oh, that's right, the Presidents Cup. Did like a little champagne toast with the tour and and some of the sponsors and. Got on a plane and, and flew to, uh, actually, I remember flying with Jordan because we were uh, dueling it out, and uh, he was just needling me the whole time asking if, you know, he's like, hey, you, you beat me, so you you owe me, you know, whatever, $5 million or something like that. I'm like, yeah, just don't hold your breath on it. Who paid for the gas on that flight? After um, PGA Tour, so Got it's it. President's Cup, so thanks for that. Noted. Okay, great. Let's see yep. the main cave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a little therapy session? Yeah. I don't think I've ever done this in an interview before. I want you to close your eyes, please. Take a big, deep breath. <sighs> Pretend that I'm your therapist. And I want you to throw some words at me when you think about last season. What comes to mind? You can keep your eyes closed, whatever makes you feel comfortable. Frustrating. Mm, bad. Confusing. Learning. You said 2023 was your least successful year. Mm -hmm. Maybe on paper, but personally, do you feel like it was your least successful year? I felt like it was a, as an amazing opportunity for me to grow and learn a lot. And I think that I'm very lucky to have a great support system around me and a great team that just constantly reminded me to keep my head up and keep pushing and looking forward, not backward, um, and understanding, you know, it's always darkest before dawn. And it just, I don't know, I, I felt like I was very lucky for that. Okay, we can open our eyes now. Another inhale. <sighs> kind of felt nice, right? Yeah, it did. I might start incorporating that more. How hard is it being a professional athlete? I, I'm not talking about the amazing side of it. We all know you get to live an incredible life, but there's so much on you as a pro athlete. I understand what you're saying. I've never really viewed it as it's hard. I feel like it's all relative. Like I'm very, I try to look at things as I don't have to do it. I get to do it. Yeah. So it's not like I have to go play these tournaments or I have to go do this corporate day or I have, yeah, there's going to be times that I may be more excited than others, but I get to do them because of the position I'm in. And it sure beats the alternative also is if I wasn't playing well and, you know, I had to go grind to try to find a job. I mean, I'm doing what I love to do and compete against the best in the world. So it's pretty fun. Help me understand the highs of winning a tournament and the lows of a miscut? I would say the lows are lower than the highs are high, which is, I don't know if that's necessarily right or 
what it should be, but it just, it feels that way. I think it's very, is that what you think too, Frank? He takes on the burden. Yeah. It's so much easier to look back when things are over, when it didn't go well and say, I wish I would have done that, or why didn't I do this, or wish I would have prepared differently, I wish I would have eaten differently, I would have gotten to whatever it is, versus when you win, it's like, it's great, you celebrate, you enjoy, and then maybe you go to the next tournament. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's not fair, to be honest. I mean, it's not fair to myself or anybody that is celebrating a win or something good, but the highs are great because it's what you work for and it's what you're, practicing for what I've done my whole life but then the lows it just seems like you're just so you're just like sad you know what I mean it's a it's a weird thing to explain who's your go-to when you want to process your game is there someone in your life that immediately all right I gotta call him or her yeah I mean obviously Jill my wife is is there through all of it so she's the one she fully understands especially now that there's definitely times when I want to talk and don't want to talk and sometimes silence is great but as funny as it is, I mean, Max Homa and I have become almost like sounding boards to each other. We're, we're eerily similar and we're both hard on ourselves. We're very competitive. We, we work hard. We expect a lot of ourselves, but with that comes tension uh, almost. So I think being able to bounce things off of somebody that you're competing against and at your same level is, is important and good. You have your friends, you know, I have Ricky, I have Jordan, I have a handful of people, but We've kind of determined that we're each other's like almost like account accountability buddy or whatever you want to call it. Sure. But it's kind of a cool little friendship thing that we've had. Can you think of a time where he might have said something to you and it clicked? You're like, yes, that's exactly how I feel. I'm not sure if anybody else feels this way. Uh, definitely. I talked to him a bunch um, over the end of the summer. And I feel like when I was trying so hard to play well um, and he's just it. You know, I think when you talk to your friends, or at least when I talk to someone like Max, it's it's weird because it's almost like you're looking for this uh, affirmation of like, I hate to say how good you are, but like what you've done. But it's it is it's it, it sounds ridiculous for Max to say the things that you know he's saying last year of of potentially different times of you know like I can't I I don't have any confidence on this. It's like, dude, you've won like two or three times this season. Like, how could you possibly think that you're anything but one of the best players in the world? But it's the same kind of thing. Like, we just don't think that way. It's And again, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. It's probably part of it is what's gotten us to where we are. But I'm sure there's other parts of it that could also get better to where we could use it to our advantage kind of thing. Pretty legendary human beings. Which one catches your eye first when you come in here? Uh, I always go to MJ's. Figured. Um, I mean, it's a cool, cool message, and I mean, he's MJ, right? It's kind of hard to, to argue with that. I think it just speaks for himself. To Justin, I'm so proud of you, a true champion. Keep up the good work. Michael freaking Jordan. Bro, look at your freaking trophy case. Look at this beautiful home. Look at the friends you have around you. It's phenomenal. It's Thank you. What, what, what you've accomplished. Thank you. We're beyond proud of you. Just It has nothing to do with golf. Like You're just an, an incredible human being. But I know you have told me in the past, and you said this publicly, you're a perfectionist and you're super competitive. There has to be that fine line. Mm -hmm. Have you found that fine line yet? No, definitely not. I... I I feel like I'm getting better at balancing it, but I I think last year, uh, last season, I got a little too much into um, making things harder than it than they needed to be. I just think it's there's something to be said about playing like when you're a kid. Um, I have a couple ball markers that I'll use to mark my ball, and one of them is a Kentucky quarter, and I, and marking it with that Kentucky side sometimes reminds me, you know, just play like you were when you're a kid. Wow, you one, Big J. Give us a sense of how much pressure you put on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Over. What's that's, the what's the high score? <laughs> that says a lot. I, right? yeah. I I I go in waves. I mean, when I think when when things aren't going well, that I put too much pressure on myself. But I I look back at 2017, 2018. I mean, a little 2019, 2020, like years when I was winning multiple times a season. That's attacking. And just 
I had a little bit better confidence and belief in what I was doing out there in the sense of just stay out of your own way. Just just do your thing and, and eventually one of these next handful of events you're, you're going to win and just let it happen as opposed to standing on the first tee and like I have to do this I have to be perfect and I mean all the all the greats will tell you they win by basically letting everybody else lose and uh you know that's that there's something to be said for that you just answered my next question when you're hanging with Tiger and Tom Brady and and the legends of the game are they saying that exact same thing to you I've had a lot of conversation with Tiger that you know, ask him this super deep question about something I'm really struggling on. And he's just like, dude, just do it. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks. Let me write that down in my yardage book. Like that's, you know, it's, <laughs> I think a lot of the greats at what they do are, are great at it for a reason that it, because it's instinctive. They don't have to try to be clutch. They don't have to try to work hard. You know, it just, it, it comes naturally and instinctive to them. So the overwhelming kind of message that I would say any great that I've talked to is just the belief in their own ability and putting the work in yeah. away from the tournament. Was there ever a time in the beginning where he would call you, FaceTime you, and Tiger Woods would pop up on your phone and you say, holy cow, this is Tiger freaking Woods calling me? It's funny you said that. I just thought of this. I I don't know if I've even ever shared this, but it, I remember I was, I was in an Apple store. I was getting a new phone. This was, I don't know, a handful of years ago. And... You know, the the Apple the guy there at Apple's like trying to help me transfer information, sign into iCloud or something <laughs> like that. And like he happened to stuff. he happened to call me right as the guy was holding my phone and he just kinda looks at it and he's like What? <laughs> and I'm like, I, it, it's nothing. And he's like, What and I'm just like, I'll call you, I'll call you in a little bit. <laughs> and I just like hung up and hand on the phone. He's like what the heck was that? I was like, it's, it's nothing. It's just a, it's a code name for somebody, whatever. It's but. not even the real tiger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's my friend Jason, actually. <laughs> Bro, you got a collection here. I've always thought it's kind of cool to been to a couple buddies' houses who have jerseys, and I think it's, I wanted it to be people that I've met and had a, you know, somewhat of a friendship with to where I feel like they could write something on there without me forcing them to. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's cool. I mean, these are guys that are competitors and in, in what they do when did ricky play baseball yeah so ricky he um this was uh yeah he had, he had a little stint with the cardinals just uh, kidding dexter we love you buddy yeah yeah going back to what i said at the beginning means the world that you would have me here let me into your home i think you're just a top-notch human being you mean the world to me and uh you're an incredible leader and friend and i appreciate Thank your time you, brother i appreciate that i think you're this guy i think your uber's up front Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. All right, pack my bags. They're already up front. Joe packed oh, them. Oh, up. all right, perfect. All right, we'll see you guys later. All right, man. That does it for this edition of Swing By. I'm Jason Kennedy. If you want to keep up with us and watch more episodes, you click right here, or you can subscribe right here.